Okay. All right, so what are we gonna do? We need some color. Taking a dark green. I'm gonna work this. Uh, this will be its third fire. It uh, this fire it comes six with some color in it, not that much. A little bit of spritz stone glaze in it, and then I did an 06. And I still need to figure out what I'm gonna put in there. If you'll remember, I had a stick in there. But um, what I'm gonna do so, and I'm mostly tweaking the values. So this is a deep green. So I figure the values on this, this would move back in space. And I'll let that... that dry and then I'm gonna probably put some of my chunkies over that I have a deep deep uh, teal but I don't know we'll see I might want to still keep some crystals in there so so this is Amico Moss Green. Just throw them in there. And sometimes I'll just put some in a cup. Okay, I'll put some in a cup and then what I'll do is I'll just take the glaze and pick some of it up. It gives me even a little bit more control over where it goes, the crystals. So I still want this to move even though it's very dark. And I'm, I'm doing this to create more depth of field in a painterly way. So. And then what else do I have? That's moss green. And this is Robin's Egg Blue. So I'm going to drop some of those in there too. Different cup. And also, you can um, use an old. But I usually like. There's several things I do with these crystals that um, I teach in my class. This is just one of the things. Use them pretty much as they come, but I do it. I do other things to them. So I just want some of that light blue in there. Maybe along the edges more, the light blue. And because it is somewhat three-dimensional, it will run a little bit. So I'm, I'm getting the lighter crystals on the edge here. Right. So, yeah. that's an easy start. Now remember, that is a deep green. And I'm in my spray booth, which my wonderful studio assistant, Danuta, just cleaned for me. So there's that. I'm going to keep it aside, just so I know what I used so far.
just to make that glaze move a little bit, I'm going to put some O12. Is it O12? Yeah, Amica O12. I layer. I use this for layering a lot because it makes what it makes it move. And I try not to put it on too evenly. And I can even put some on in the hair because that will make the color in the hair move. But I am going to go over this with some underglaze because I wanted a little more matte than this glaze would be. So there's my O12. Oh, and there I might just drop some O12 in here because I'm going to put some more right in there. And while I'm thinking about it, I guess I could get some shadows under the lace. I could heighten those shadows under the lace so I can come in here and just tighten that. Anywhere things overlap to create a more even more sculptural effect. So and if I do the edges that will make that move back in space a little bit too. Okay. And um, if you're worried about that edge being too sharp, you can soften it with a little water, make it run. Move it around a bit. Okay. And I think I'll just put the robin's egg blue down here. And it the crystals. Oof, that wasn't the robin egg blue, that was a little screen. Okay, get them off. Try again. Now, what you can do, if the crystals are a little big for you, get an old coffee grinder and put them in the coffee grinder. Don't do it, just pulse it because you'll get dust if you... Not that dust isn't a neat effect too. All right, so where does that leave us? So I have some hunter green, is it hunter green, dark green, velvet 353. And remember, this is a glossy glaze, so I want to just soften it a bit. And I want, I don't want this to be a solid color, so that's why I do it when it's wet. It will be, it matted a, a little bit, and I definitely am putting it on in a painterly way with a, a sort of a cross hatching. And if it's dry, in any place, you can just give it a spritz and that'll wet it down again. And I like runs, so I don't worry about that. I'm going to come here and just darken up here a little bit. But, um, and so this would move, probably be the farthest back, so I'm going to try to really get that. So I'm going to complement of green is red, but I don't want to go exactly complement, so I'm probably going to go some deeper purple in here, a purpley blue. So what do I got? I have a maroon. And we're going to cone 06. It goes almost a deep wine in color if you put gloss over it. So I am putting this into the gloss of the gl the first glaze I put down, but I've watered it down, so I, I think it will go pretty matte. So this is going to add a little bit of 
complementary color to this green. Just to keep it interesting, and I suppose I could go and get that in the ear and some of the dark places in the hair. This would be my she's a redhead. I don't know why I do redheads. I always liked red hair, I guess. Okay. So that's a little bit of maroon. Might as well come down here and just take some of it. And if I hit a crystal, I just leave it. Let it. Because this the crystal, depending on how slow I fire it, those crystals will grow very nicely. So if I just add underglaze over a dry, a fired on glaze, what I'm going to get is a little bit of crackly. And if you don't want that, you need to put down a glaze of some kind, something glossy to work into, or medium glossy. Or you can add some jade bait to it, and that'll make your underglaze slightly glossy. That's another trick. GB Gersley Borate. Right. So that should that should go pretty pretty dark in there. Between those two might get mud. You're out. It's always a little dangerous working with compliments. You can get mud. Mud. Live dangerously. Okay. So now that I've got that darker, I can see that I need to lighten up the hair a little bit. So I'm going to start with some O12. That's going to be my glaze into which I'm going to work. This is a little dried out. <laughs> I go through this O12. But sometimes I let them dry out because I like that effect too, especially when I'm doing my tiles. So this is not the color. This is a fairly transparent uh, uh, opalescent, amico opalescent glaze. Come, was it 05, 06? Something like that. Something like that. But I'll be firing it most probably to somewhere 05, 06. It depends on what the tiles need. So I'm just going to... And I can lighten up this, maybe. Just lighten. Change that color a bit. These edges. Change them a little bit. And remember, that's my glaze, so now I can work into it while it's wet with some underglaze. So this is a, a Velvet 308. And I'm just going to put some highlights in there. Now I'm putting underglaze directly on a fired glaze, and so what I have to do for that is to find some kind of glaze. I could put a clear glaze over it. We'll see.
me go back with the tonus down with either the 012 or something else. I'm not quite sure. But I do want to get, brighten this edge to create the more contrast. And up around here where this stick will come out. Maybe on this edge just What you don't want to do, guys, is just follow the instructions on the bottle and put three three heavy, even coats of underglaze on. You don't want to do that. That's so boring. Oh. Kill your sculpture. That's what you'll do with that. Do that. Kill your sculpture. Don't do that. Is called bamboo. It's a sort of opaque yellow, which are sort of fine. Most of the yellows are fairly, uh, and it's not true to color, of course. So I just want to come over that yellow I put there. And I'm probably losing the decals that I had in there. But it was mostly just to move it at that layer. I could put decals into this, certainly. And since this is a glaze, that'll make up for the, um, the underglaze that I put there. It's fairly opaque, though. Right. And maybe lighten this edge. This is a Neopalacian Glaze 054, so I'm going to use it on some flesh tones. So, I've already got a pretty shiny glaze from the Celadon. You can see it right there. It's a little heavy. But I'm still going to put a glaze down before I start with some underglazes. And this is what? 054, that's it over a white glaze. You see the underglazes. is white. So, You've got to be careful it doesn't go too pink on you, but I'm going to come in with some uh, Amico uh, Velvets. Some and I try to work fairly quickly so I can work into it wet.
so this is out of a beige if you're worried about it because it will go if you don't have some kind of glaze in it under it you're gonna oh, I'm open the new one for the workshop you could add freshly boring I never measure so so I'm just gonna come with my um, ivory beige because I don't want this too this pink so this will mat it a little bit but you see I, I don't smooth the clay so I'm I'm going with fairly I want my the work of my hand to be in there in me to see of the clay. So while I've got that, I'm thinking that I could just get a little bit of turquoise. I don't want it really strong, I want it pretty watery, so just to get some, so it's really sort of runny. And if I did this with a glaze, it wouldn't be as strong. And I want it strong, I want it there, like a painter. So I'm creating shadows that are turquoise colored into the face. I'm just going to put this whole side of the face in heavier shadow. You don't need the heavy coat to cuz the colors in the and the amico velvets are so nice and strong. They don't chintz on the on the color on the stains. So it's nice. You can really get the, if you're working like this, you'll find that your, your $40 bottle or $30 bottle, depending on the color, lasts a very long time when you work in a painterly fashion when you're not putting. So that way you can invest in every color, right? Find out what you can do for them. Okay, so that's, I like that. I think I might want to take some of that turquoise back into the hat just a little bit. We'll see. Cure it out. Oh, I'm getting mud here. We don't want mud. So I'm putting that on in a cross hatching style, which is a painterly thing. You know, it's a thing painters do. It's a kind of blending when you don't want to go over and over with the brush. And so now I'm thinking about how to move the eye around. All the turquoise is right here. And I'm picking up a little more turquoise in a little couple places. So that the eye moves up in there a little bit. And maybe over here just a little bit. Help move it around. Yep. Okay. It's a good start. I'm liking that. So next, what am I going to do with that lace? So 
So, uh, let's see if I can get. So this is a, some puff, puff uh, glaze. I think it's a Duncan. And I'm just gonna, just like I do. Now you can make a three dimensional white from scratch and I do most of the time, but um, couldn't find the puddle so I grabbed this. So while I'm there, I might as well reason I don't like use this stuff, I like to move now because this stuff dries out. So you really waste a lot of money. So I make my own. So I'm just putting some texture on my head in the picture. I need both hands to get this stuff out. Yeah, and somebody commented one time, going in it looks like little worms all over it, but coming out it looks like... I'm trying to think of... It is lace as I'm doing it in this sort of abstract way. highlights on her eyes. There's a little ball of clay that I put in the hole too so that I can add the uh, highlight later on. So that's a good start. All right, so now what? Well, I'm going to go ahead and do some painterly stuff on the um, chunkies and it's pretty much the color that it is that you see except it's somewhat transparent so I'm just gonna go ahead and tweak the color on her lips trying to do it in a painterly fashion and maybe put a little bit of color pink up the eyes a little bit. It looks like I got some red in there. Somewhere I have some red. So I'm going to add the pink here. And you can't, my, I, I usually add my chunkies at the end. some color back in here.
unutmuş. So I want this to be more interesting too, so I'm gonna find something I like. This is a crystal glaze. There's crystals in it, they're fairly small. And Unevenly, so I took a bristle brush for that. Softer brush would put it on evenly, but I want it. And once again, I'm using a cross hatching kind of technique. It's a little bit too green for me, a little too mint greeny. So what do you think I'm gonna do? To... I'm gonna let it dry or I could take a heat gun to it. Because I do have uh, plugs here and whatnot in my spray booth. Somebody oh, Pam. Somebody in my driveway, and I don't know why they're there, so I'm gonna go out and see. So the uh, gas company, hello again, the gas company, swapping out my meter. They say they do this periodically, probably means I'm not paying them enough. <laughs> oh, utilities, utilities. A little sarcasm in my voice there. Okay, so I only have gas for a couple of things. My cook. My, my cooktop and hot water. Oh yeah. So now I'm wondering. What I can do to. You know. That's pretty good. What did I do? That's the pink there, and then I did, I, did I come up over it with the ivory? I did.
So they're swapping out my gas meter, huh? For one that will charge me more, probably. Okay, so now I need it to be darker down in there. Remember, what I'm, what I'm concentrating on is increasing values. So I'm just going to take um, a nice color I want to use out before, where is it, where I put it. This is a royal blue, but it, it can go sort of purpley. And so I'm just going to come back in here and darken everything down a little bit. I'm going to darken some parts of the bird. Thinking about carrying the eye too, some of the blue of the bird. But this is a very dark blue, so we want to. Hmm, I like that, adding a little texture there. And I'm thinking that this edge of the hat moving back in space would probably not be lighter like I made it, but darker. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. back in here I didn't get any place. I was thinking if I could close this up and have a little thing to put water in it, wouldn't that be neat? You could actually sprout things again here. Why don't you give it a try? When I finish firing, you never know. Okay. Try to make the lace somewhat see through. All right. I could do here, but I'm not sure what I want to do. That's the thing. Got to think about it. I have no idea how they're going to fire. This is rough. 
This is a little smooth. Thing is, don't want to waste these. I only got two of them. Saving them for years. This is what happens. I get so attached to my decals, I don't want to use them. I mean, what's the only this is that, huh? because uh, something I developed it, it will speckle this glaze sometimes so we'll see create a little room with that I definitely don't want it in the face so I probably should have made very sure I didn't get in the face because we don't want speckled face
girl. I guess I'll turn this off because that was a long thing, me going out there, the gas guy wanted me to show him where the heater was. All right, so I just need to brighten the red. anymore. I'm trying to figure out how to make it myself. And it does have some crystals in it, but I think I've used most of them up. But it's a really nice deep red. Okay, ready for its next fire. Mm. Yes? Hey, honey, would you take that laundry in, honey? He's the gas guy that keeps freaking out on the gas meter. Uh, so, would you go take all that laundry in? Take mm -hmm. the laundry is sitting outside from yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright. So you can have a little bit longer. He was wondering why the meter was going on crazy. 